Thank you, Lord. God, I pray you'd bless this message. You laid it on my heart, so help me lay it on other people's hearts. Amen. Um, I don't know if Ricky can hear me, but I, we put some food. I put some food in the warming oven, and uh, usually I'm downstairs for Lord's Supper to work on the food, and now it's going to be all Ricky, I guess. <laughs> all right, so anyway, hopefully she'll do okay, and if somebody feels led to help her, that's great. There's a uh, <clears throat> a unit downstairs where you can get the sermon. Uh, you can hear it while you're working. So, so you've heard of whistling while you work. Well, you can cook while you you can cook while you listen to. All right, Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. We I talked about this last week, and maybe this is why the Lord put it on my heart. I don't know. Uh, the essence of the law. Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. This is what God requires. Um, Lonnie, if you could fix my voice and make me sound lovely that would be great i know he can't i i listened to my cd last week and i thought boy i hate my voice anyway okay matthew 22 go to matthew 22 and verse 36 the pharisees the sadducees whoever it was the scribes said, teacher, which is the great greatest commandment of the law? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And this is the first and greatest commandment. I'm going to talk today about loving God with your whole heart, soul, and mind. And in another place it says, in all your strength. We have a lot of sayings in, in America, in maybe the English, I don't know. I could think of about three, where somebody does something and, and they say, oh, his heart was not in it, right? We have his heart was not in it. Um, it hear, did anybody hear this when you were growing up? If anything is worth doing, it's worth doing well. How many heard that? That's kind of our generation. Our, the greatest generation said that to us so we would learn it. I don't think a lot of people learned it, but all right. And we've, uh, I've heard he didn't put his all in it. He didn't put his all in it. And we see, we see people like the, um, let me get this right, the Ukrainians are putting their all into fighting this. They're putting their all into it. Um, in Ecclesiastes 9.10, you don't necessarily have to turn to it, but my, I, you know, I've never preached out of Ecclesiastes. I've never preached that much anyway, so that's no big deal. Um, Ecclesiastes 9.10, I kind of like this verse. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. So what he's saying, and Ecclesiastes, is, it's, I think it's kind of a fun read. I mean, it's, he's so pessimistic and, and uh, I, he's sarcastic. It's, he's... he's I, I, I hope he found the Lord before all of this. But anyway, what he's saying is if you're going to do something, you might as well do it right because you can't do it right when you're dead. That's basically what he's saying. You're going to die, so you better do what you're doing. Do it right now. Do it good. Do Put all your might into it. And I like that. And, and uh, this, this is going to be a short sermon, so for you in the kitchen, jaldi jaldi. <laughs> Um, that's, that's Hindi means hurry up, hurry up. All right. Um, I have some examples of people who did not put their all into it. Okay. Second Kings, 
we we'll go to second. And there are, there's probably a ton of references, but this one stuck with me. Second Kings 13, verse 15. Okay, he's ta Elisha is talking to Joash, the king of Israel. He, the king came down to him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. That's some kind of a saying that means uh, uh, all hell is breaking loose, help. That's kind of what that saying means. And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it, and Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Ooh, okay. And he said, open the window, open the east window, and he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot, and he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, for you must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Okay, so Joash knows uh, this is a prophet, and in those days the prophets did weird things, okay? And Elisha was known for doing weird and miraculous things, and so he's, Elisha has his hands on his hands, and he shoots the bow. So Joash knows this is a prophetic thing, that you are going to destroy. This is the arrow of the Lord. You're going to destroy, uh, destroy the, Syri the Syrians. Then he said, take the arrows, and he took them, and he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck the ground three times, and he stopped. And the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. He did not do it with all his heart. He did it half-heartedly, even half-heartedly. There's another saying, he did it half-heartedly. He struck it three times, and Elisha said, you should have struck it five or six times. He, he was not, I don't know why. He, he didn't, maybe he despised, he despised prophetic words, I don't know. Maybe he just was not into how, I mean, obviously when he says the chariots of Israel, uh, the chariots of God here, of Israel and their horsemen, it's like death is coming to us. D this is death. Whenever, when somebody died, oh, the ch when Elisha, actually Elijah died, oh, the chariots of Israel and God. That's what he said when he was dying or when he was taken into heaven. It's a, I, I, I haven't studied it enough to know exactly what it is, but it's not like, oh, everything's okay. All right? So I don't know why he didn't, but he didn't. He struck it three times, and Elisha was mad at him. And uh, I, I, I saw something up ahead, or, or before this, um, that Elisha, the death, Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. So at this time, Elisha is not in full health. He's doing the will of God. He's, he's uh, doing a prophetic thing with Joash. And, uh, and, and he was mad. Here's, here's Eli Elisha is on basically dying. Whatever he died from, he was sick with this when he went to Joash. And, and he was mad because here he's doing all he can and what he's supposed to be doing with God. And, and, uh, and this Joash is just kind of wimpy. He's just not doing what he's supposed to do. And uh, just so you know, all the kings of Israel were bad kings. None of them were good. None of them. They were all bad. All right. So uh, turn with me to Matthew 25. Again, I'm just giving you some examples of people not doing things with their whole heart. And you can think in your own life when you haven't done things with your whole heart. All right. Get some little conviction in there, huh? We all have times when we didn't do things with our whole heart. Matthew 25, 15. And to one he gave five talents, and another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. God doesn't give everybody the same thing. He gives you all an ability. He, you have a talent, but that's okay. And... Uh, 
the guy who had five talents traded and made another five. And he who had received two gained two more also, but he had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he had, who had received five talents came and brought five of the talents, saying, Lord, you have delivered me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents. And his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. And he who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents beside him. Did you notice that nobody, he didn't give anybody three and four? He went from five to two. So whenever, whenever you feel like you are just, you know, look at this person here or look at this church, it's a mega church, and then look at us and we're two. We're not five, we're two. <laughs> just think of that. He didn't, get, he didn't hand out three and four. He skipped that. He went from majestic, he really liked this guy in game five, and then he gave the other guy two. Who are you to judge? That's, that's just what God did, all right? He can do what he wants. And the Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So he says to him, well, I knew you were an unjust God. I knew you, you expected stuff out of me that I didn't have. You, you expect too much out of me. You didn't give, you know, I, you are an unjust man. You're an unjust God. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there is what is yours. In other words, you know, uh, you save me and I know you're unjust and you don't expect any more out of me and I can't do any more than just be saved, so here I am. <clears throat> but his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed, then you ought to have deposited my money at the bankers. And at my coming, I would have at least received back my own with interest. So he turns it right back on him. If you knew I was such a wicked Lord, such an unjust Lord, you, you should have at least put it in the bank and got interest. And instead you hid it in the ground. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, boy, God, that's harsh. You're so harsh. Remember last week how harsh he was that you know, I'll rend you to pieces, I'll tear you to pieces unless you repent? It's like, whoa. You know, I, I mean, Jesus said this, so I'll go fight with him. You know, I, that's what he said. You, you cannot be half, you can't be lukewarm. You cannot be lukewarm. I mean, you can, but you see what happens. If you're lukewarm, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have to give your all, your, all your heart, your soul, your mind. You have to give everything. Now I'm gonna give you some examples of people who gave their all. First, I can just, off the top of my head, think of David's mighty men. Why were they mighty? Were they big and strong? Were they excellent in athletics? Were they whatever? No, because they gave their all. They gave their all to David and they gave their all to God. Who's the one who slew uh, 200 men in a pea pit? You know, I mean, uh, can you imagine killing 200 men? Can you imagine how, how this guy must have fought to kill 200 men? Talk about your action movies where they're jumping off of walls and knocking people down. They had nothing on these guys, you know? and. Uh, uh, anyway, that's just off the top of my head. Second Samuel 
Again, you don't have to turn. You can trust me. I'm just going to read it right out of here. 614. We think of David. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. In other words, he was wearing his undergarments. He wasn't in his underwear. He didn't have whitey tighties on or anything like that. He was in like a, a what we would call a slip, a kind of an undergarment, a linen t-shirt long, you know. And, uh, and then uh, it goes on to say Michael despised him. And, uh, and, and he, he danced with all his might and she despised him. And David says in verse 21, it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. I, this is what surprised me. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord. How does that fit in there? God chose me, therefore I will play music. I just want you to chew on that today. God chose me instead of your father, therefore I will play music. Well, music is one of those things that you give your all your heart to. When you think of people who, who are, are stars of singing, it's because they give their whole heart to the singing. It's because they present the song and make you feel it, right? They make you part of that song. They, they are able to uh, put it into your heart so much because they're doing it with all their heart. When you hear somebody sing and they're not, they don't have their all heart in it, you, it doesn't do anything for you. It's not anointed per se, even in a worldly sense, but someone who really gives their all in even a worldly sense they touch your heart. It goes into you. It is anointed in the worldly sense, but how much more the Lord? But I just thought that was pretty cool, just because I'm king, therefore I will play music before the Lord. And I will be even more undignified than this. And, and he goes on, and, and uh, anyway, therefore, so, uh, Michael had no children to the day of her death. So he basically just said, enough of you. Anyway, I, that he, David was known for all, giving all his heart, right? If you go to 2 Kings 23. This is just a few. You can think of many, many people uh, in the Bible that gave their all. Oh, 2 Kings, I'm in Chronicles. Ha, ha, ha. Dead air, dead air, oh well. Right? Who cares? Yeah, we're presenting something. I want this to be in your heart. I want you to think about this all week long. Uh, verse 23, but in the 18th year of King Josiah, this Passover was held before the Lord in Jerusalem. Moreover, Josiah put away those who consulted mediums and spiritists the household gods and idols, all the abominations that were seen in the land of Judah and Jerusalem, that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest had found in the house of the Lord. Now before him there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to the law of Moses, nor after him did any arise like him. So this guy was more on fire than David. Nobody before him, nobody after him was like Josiah. And he, he got rid of all the idolatry in Israel. He, he, just, he was zealous, what does it say, with all his soul, his heart, soul, and might. He served the Lord. He, just, he, did, not, uh, he did not stop at anything. He did it all. I want you to read onward, it says, nevertheless, the Lord did not turn from the fierceness of, of his wrath with which his anger was aroused against Judah because of the provocations with which Manasseh had provoked him. So even though Josiah was wonderful and served the Lord with his whole heart and his whole mind, God still judged Israel. So 
but I'm sure Josiah was gone and that's, he didn't have to see it, okay? Then we're gonna go to Judges. This is one of my favorites. I've actually preached on this one before. I just think this is, this woman is just something to behold. Judges 4.18. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me, do not fear. And when he had turned aside with her into the tent, she covered him with a blanket. And then he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she opened a jug of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. And he said to her, Stand at the door of the tent. If any man comes and inquires of you, say, Is there any man here? You shall say, No. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple. And it went down into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. Can you imagine that? Now, when they had tents, they did not have little pup tents like we had. They had big tents. They probably were like from here to where Jeff is sitting and maybe as wide as the pews. And they're, they're uh, pounding the pegs into a sandy, kind of crummy. I, was, I have a tent peg. I have a circus tent peg. It's this big. It's this big around at top and it goes down in the bottom. And it's like, uh, it's like what you see on TV in some of these old movies, an elephant stake that they stake the elephant to. It's like that. So I would say that the tent peg is somewhere between a circus tent peg and the little doinky things that we have, right? So you got this thing. Now, she, she, I, there's a whole history of this woman, but she has a reason to hate Caesarea, okay? He's attacking Israel, and she is from a tribe in there and she she has a she's angry at him okay even though she's married to somebody that should be friends with Caesarea here okay so she takes the, she first he asks for water and she gives him milk so she's sneaky milk makes you go to sleep okay it's probably warm there's no refrigerators so it's warm fresh milk, make him nice and sleepy. He's been in battle, he's tired. She covers him up with a nice, keep him nice and warm, give him some milk. And then when he's fast asleep, she sneaks up on him, says she went softly up on him with a hammer and with this peg. So I don't know if his head was covered or not. I don't know, nobody knows. But she takes this and she lines it up to his temple and she bashes it. You. You can't just go tappa 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 and get it through somebody's head, right? This is not a little tack hammer. This is a big, uh, probably the hammer that they, they, that they pound in the stakes with. And she, she had to, with all her, all her strength, and just to get over just thinking about doing it, you would have to do it with all, with all your mind. You, you've got to change your mind about what you think about killing somebody right there. You know what I mean? It's not like these were brutal people. I mean, it's not like you go around every day killing someone. This, I, to me, the mindset of her had to be, I, I don't know, all her soul, all her mind, all her strength to bam that thing into his head. And you know, it would have taken more than one bam to get all through his head, right? It would have taken, just, I, this is why I think of this. I think that woman, my goodness. And she had to have at least hit it twice. But she bammed it into his head and he died right there. I, and to me, it's like that is certainly all your might, all your strength, all your heart, all your soul. She gave that everything, everything. And so she's one of my heroines in the Bible. Not that I want to kill, sorry, not that I want to kill anybody, but just that she could even make her mind do that. I mean, I, I just, oof, I don't know. You think about nowadays, you know, people say, get guns and you're going to defend yourself and blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I have a gun. It has no bullets. It's an old 22 rifle, an antique thing. We have no bullets. With all my kids and all their problems around, there's no way we're going to have bullets in that house. No way. Okay, so that, that settled that. But, and we have an old... Uh, antique 
over under whatever it's it's like does a 22 on one side and a 410 on the other it's some kind of game getter they used to call them it's like 1920s and again no bullets because you know but I think about that because so many people I know have guns and have a stash of guns people that you know have guns and they think about defending their house and and maybe it's different with men but with women I with me I think if I really did have a gun and bullets could I shoot a person coming into the house? Yeah. Yeah, better get the bullets. Yeah. Well, I, but I think about that. Am I capable of doing that? And then I think of JL. But, you know, I, I could shoot a deer. I could shoot a turkey. I could shoot, shoot food for uh, animals for food. I could do that. I've been out in the backyard in my bathrobe shooting squirrels, but not for food, just because they were stealing the chicken food. But um, with my BB gun, you know, BB gun, you know, that's, actually it's a good BB gun. I could, I could kill little animals with it. It has been done, but anyway, I just think of JL doing this and think all her heart, all her soul, all her mind. So, um, and then I think of uh, our missionaries, all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, um, going down to Mexico, to think of Ron Testa. Leave, leave a good job up here, sell your house, go down to Mexico, and they're living in some little shack for the first couple of years they're there. Just a, a real crummy little house. But they gave their heart and their soul and their mind, and he's led... Through the other people that he has led to the Lord, thousands have come to the Lord. But if he would have done it half-heartedly and said, well, I'm not living in this house. I can't have my wife and kids live in this house. It's crummy. It's rats running through it and all that. I mean, you've got to realize down in Mexico, rats are all over. Just like India, rats are all over. We were glad to be on the third floor. We had lots of mice, but we didn't have rats coming up there. But... You give your heart, your whole heart, your whole soul, because God told you to go there. God told you to strike the arrows. And so you don't strike them three times, you strike them six times, as much as you need. You, your whole heart, your whole soul, your whole mind. So my purpose here today is to stir you up. Sometimes as we get older, I wouldn't say sometimes, all the time as we get older, we just kind of want to coast. Hey, I'm retirement age. Hey, I've done my stuff. I've been to India. I've, I've given all. I've gotten sick. I've done everything for God. Now I'm just going to coast. Uh-uh. No, you still give your all. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. That goes today for shoveling, you know? Do it with all your might. You find something in your hand to do. Or like Terry, he finds himself at a restaurant with someone and it just leads to it. That guy has corn, I'll give you food, bread of life. You, you do it with all your might. Because why not? You're gonna die. You better do a good job down here, right? You don't get to, you don't have chances in heaven to lead people to the Lord. You don't have chances in heaven to, to, well, I don't know, to do all everything with all your might. We certainly can serve the Lord with all our might up there. But he wants us to do down here. He wants us to serve him down here with all our might. And I always have this thing where, like that song, Oh Lord, please use me, please don't refuse me, that God gives you a tool. Now, this is a talent. He gives you a talent. What if he gives you a hammer? What are you supposed to do with the hammer? Gee, God, gee, I'll try to take this bolt out with a hammer. No, no. If he gives you a wrench, you take the bolt out with the wrench. But if he gives you a hammer, you're supposed to pound something, right? Right? So whatever he's put in your heart, whatever he's put in your hand, do it with all your might. And uh, some of us have gone through a lot of trials. You know, I, with Kim here, I, it's like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do? Well, whatever I'm supposed to do, I'm gonna do it with all my might because that's 
the way to succeed. Nobody succeeds if, if nobody becomes great by being halfway, by doing something half-heartedly. You can't accomplish anything besides mediocrity by doing something halfway. So I'm just encouraging you to stir up that gift that's in you, whether you have a wrench or a hammer or a chainsaw or a, a, a singing. Do it with all your might. Do it with all your might because you don't get to do it once you're dead, right? I think that's so funny. I don't know why, but I think he was so sarcastic and so um, he's depressing, you know, to read that. But it's it's actually a, a it's I don't know. I learn things in Ecclesiastes. So that's my whole sermon. That's all I got. But just do everything with your whole heart, your whole heart. And I think of these singers singing with their whole heart. And I, I mean, that's, that's, how you, that's how you get to people's heart, is to give your whole heart. If you're witnessing to somebody and you're half-hearted, yeah, you know, I, I found Jesus and I I'm, have a pretty good life now. <laughs> right? Just right down. No. You're, you, I love the Lord with my whole heart, my whole mind, my whole soul, my whole strength. So let's do that. Let's, uh, this week, think about that. I want you to think about that. Kim's sermon was on seeking the Lord in desperation. Seeking, he'll probably preach, still preach that, but it was kind of the same as mine. With your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul. I mean, Jesus said it. Do you think he was half-hearted? How, how could you go to the cross half-heartedly? How can you do any of the things that he did half-heartedly? Nothing, no, everything. You give everything. And, and again, wherever God leads you, whatever you, he has you do, you do it with all your might. So let's pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I pray that this message would touch people's hearts and they would think about it and do everything well and with all their might and excel in everything that you have shown them to do, God. Um, oh, Lord, use me. Please don't refuse me. Surely there's a job that I can do. And even though it's humble, Lord, help my will to crumble. Though the task be great, I'll work for you. I like that song. It's one of the first things I learned when I, was, when I first got saved. Anyway, stir it up. Yes, use it. Use it or lose it. Just say, hey, use it or lose it. That's scriptural, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Amen. Um, Lord, bless you, keep you, give you lots of food to eat downstairs. Amen. And be blessed this week. Amen. Amen. <laughs>